spot. <laughs> well, now's your time to move. You got about a minute and a half. I know. I'm trying to straighten it out. Now I'm getting a foot cramp. Mm. <laughs> shut, shut up. up. Here's a B roll for you. <laughs> Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Build, Paint, Play. I'm Dave. And I'm Jake, and we are joined today by the fantastic folks from Army Painter and CW Studios here. Woohoo! Huh? Uh, How are you doing? So, and Caleb, CK Studios. CK. Oh, uh, what did I say? CW. Oh, great network. Uh, different thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't even catch that. That's a kind of a interesting amalgam I, I listen all the time everything so um one thing uh everybody who's in the chat will all already have seen that i completely screwed up the start um i said it's live before i muted everybody and switched the, the panel. nice so there's a, a lovely little blooper reel right at the front <laughs> so fun. I'll, I'll try i'll probably slice it off before uh we set it all live on i it. love well, b-rolls i'll just run it run it <laughs> yeah just do it live that's why we that's why we do it live oh that's yeah it's true, true. <laughs> awesome uh so just saying hi to everybody in the chat we've got scott uh he said let's have a good clean show no heppling no eye poking no shots below the belt no promises no Cat, promises. Uh... I'm talking to you <laughs> uh we've got Luis here we've got patrick uh dave hummel is here fantastic hi dave uh matt bowles is here hi matt jeff uh jez uh of course cat is saying hi already in the chat um awesome we've got chris kemig uh oh matt balls is going to also check out the tau codex while enjoying today's show which is great uh josh potter is here uh and oh <laughs> look at you <laughs> i'm guessing you already picked up you've got the whole box there right as well <laughs> yeah, yeah i got the uh i picked up the new one yeah, you want to rummage through the sprues? Is that what you want to do? I think we call that a full send. It's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, very cool, very cool. Uh, so tonight, uh, as Jake said, we're joined by the wonderful uh, Kat and Caleb from uh, the Army Painter. We're going to be talking about uh, a whole bunch of different things. Kat is the uh, events and community manager. Is that the rough title? There exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and um, and Caleb uh, is going to be helping out with uh, event activities. Uh, She's the, um, our event specialist. Event like spe it's the, like literally the title being event specialist. So he's he's our event man of all trades right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the typical. He's he's casting the other half in everything. 
still doing that. Awesome. That's cool. So we're going to be talking about um, the things that the Army Painter are going to be doing. I know um, there's a whole bunch of change going on um, and advancement, I guess, moving things forward. Um, it's started uh, last year and is carrying through. So there are some big um, things to big uh, challenges to to face uh, that you're working through. Um, so we'll talk about uh, some of the cool things that you'll be doing later this year. Uh, we'll also take a, a look back. We'll stroll through memory lane with uh, CK Studios uh, mm -hmm. and all the fun and uh, hobby skills that you brought to people. Uh, and brought to people through CK Studios over the years. Uh, and, of course, at the end of the show, we'll have a look at all of the wonderful uh, minis that folks have posted in our Facebook group, uh, the Build, Paint, Play community. So nice. that's going to cover everything there, Jake. I think so. Nice. There might be one or two well, other things. We'll probably talk about San Diego Comic-Con. Can we talk about Comic -Con. San Diego Comic-Con? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can talk about that, too. Um <laughs> The oh the big thing I wanted to tell people this is so this again we kind of been finding this out in bits and pieces over the last like probably two or three weeks um, so apparently we have a pretty big following uh, via SoundCloud and Spotify and iHeartRadio which I didn't really realize was a thing that we were doing I mean we knew we were posting it but like our, our buddy Gonzo and like they they take care of that they just take our audio file and they post it and because this is mostly a video related show at least. In terms of a lot of the content towards the end, um, it seemed weird to me. But apparently, we're averaging north of 300 shares every time something comes out. So not 300 listens. Like people are taking the sound file and posting it to other places north of 300 times. That's our average. Um, so I was like, "That's really cool." Um, I would love to get some of those people who are hopefully listening now to go onto our YouTube. And like and subscribe if that's something that they want to do, or at least join the community on our Facebook page. Uh, because it's like it's hard for us to track, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's right. still good news, it's just like I don't know what to do with that. So or at least uh it's like throw a comment on uh, on one of the videos and let us know sure. where you're listening from, which would be uh, absolutely cool. but yeah, it is uh it is amazing. We were we find it uh yeah, great. We find it exciting. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, yeah, it's all, it's all good news. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Um, oh, we've got Trevor here. Trevor's in the chat. Uh, Trevor Allison. Aww. Uh, Hi, from Armored Wolf. Oh, I did have I did have my bag right here, Trevor, but I took it to a game on the weekend. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh mine's packed already. So, <laughs> what, what so was pretty. Pretty? Huh? Okay. What was Caleb's? Oh, I have. This is my my latest. Oh, very nice. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, oh, oh, that's nice too. I love that world either one. Wow! Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little problem. No, it's, well, the problem is you don't have another one, right? Right. <laughs> right. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, Trevor Allison uh, from Armored Wolf, who is uh, one of the sponsors for our. Uh, Taylor for Warlord series. Uh, Josh uh, said, thanks for the paint and take support, Cat. Got another one coming up this weekend, which is fantastic. Uh, Super Dan Osborne is in the chat. Welcome, Super Dan. Um, we're excited. Who's, who's, to... Dan, who's Dan Osborne? Who's Dan Osborne? Uh, you're, not allowed to, you're not allowed to meet him. It's okay. You're not allowed to have him on. <laughs> Uh, it's, Caleb, it's Caleb. The running joke is that Dan has been on the show twice, and both episodes he was on, I was not here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I, we, so I saw him. Boy. He, so I, 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 I saw him at Adepticon, and I was like, "Who's that?" And Dave was like, "Oh, that's that's Dan Osborne." And I was like, "Oh, Dan Osborne, who was on the show?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Do you want to introduce me?" He's like, "It's actually funnier that you don't know who Dan Osborne is." And I was like, okay, <laughs> For sure. For sure. Oh, ooh, uh, and my bowl says he can't wait to get uh, Trevor, um, get with Trevor, and get my Beast Snagger Boys bag made. That'll be a cool bag. Yeah. We've got a photo of Matt's uh, finished kill rig later in the uh, later in the show, uh, which would be fantastic. <laughs> all right, you want to do want to do hobby stuff Dan, first? Dan, I think I think Jake may be all AI. Yeah, I am. I am one hundred percent AI generated. Yeah. You're like but, Max, but like, 
but old technology. I'm all, I'm all me with punch cards and vacuum tubes. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, fantastic. And also, uh, Greg has joined us. a background joke, but I guess. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's jump into uh, talking about some uh, bits and pieces. Uh, first thing I need to do, of course, uh, even though we have our wonderful uh, Army Painter representatives here on the show, uh, I am also going to say uh, thank you very much to season sponsor, the Army Painter. Uh, as you know, each week I grab a uh, post from their um, Instagram page. Uh, Instagram account. Uh, and this one is of Sam Lance, factory team member. Uh, Sam sort of cleaned up at Adepticon. Uh, he got uh, Silver Demon there for his um, Beast Nagger Orcs uh, in Golden Demon. He uh, also won trophies in Path of the Worthy, which was the MCP uh, competition from Atomic Mass Games, uh, P3 Grand Masters, and the Resin Beast. Uh, which are all competitions that were going on. Uh, and Sam entered them all and uh, took away trophies, which is super cool. Uh, I'm really hoping that we'll be able to talk to Sam in about three weeks' time. So April 30th. Uh, I'm chatting with him tomorrow, and I'm, that's where I'll get, sort of get to nail him down to see if we can have him on the show. Yeah, we'll have to talk to Sam and be like, hey, man, like, leave some crumbs for the rest of us. How about you don't enter every competition? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, right? all he, that's all he left for the rest of us, just crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I think but, uh, he might be on his way over to Denmark this week. Uh, yeah, I think he. Um, I think he leaves I Saturday. Think leave, like this, I think they're leaving this week. Might be next week. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's this weekend. I think you're right. Uh, but yeah, super excited uh, there. Um, next up, of course, I'm uh, plugging my next Ooh. Kickstarter. So uh, first up, we've got Roman Lapat. Next week, I'll I'll show something from Sam and then just rely. But uh, I love that piece. Yeah, this is a uh, absolutely amazing. Have you, um, Kat and Caleb, have you spoken with Roman about this piece at all? Um, actually, I can remember when he was having people paint zombies for it in classes at Nova. Yeah, yep. I think I got a couple zombies in there somewhere. Yeah, I do too. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's that's, that's a piece that was in such a long period in the making for him it was so it was so, it became such a personal journey for him to complete that piece i think yeah but but that's roman too that that man paints from from his soul like ooh, yep very much so, so. Neat. he's so neat it's gonna be a great book mm -hmm. i'm super excited super excited about it uh but uh there's a link down below uh, so you can click on that and go and um, sign up to be notified. I say sign up. It's just click another button, notify me, uh, and then Kickstarter will send you an email uh, once we go live in a few weeks' time. But, uh, yep, very excited about that. Uh, next up, I think uh, we are going to be chatting about um, hobby. What sort of hobby have we all been up to? Uh, Caleb. What have you been working on? Oh, you know, I got the competition bug. Um, obviously, you know, seeing there, all the work from our team, from Tyler and Sam and Adam and everything really got the bug. And now that I'm not stuck judging, I guess, you know, it really got me kind of well, fired up. So I just started um, one of the Kingdom Death. Uh, what do you call that? The painter scale pieces. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I've been slowly putting her together building i haven't started any paint yet but i'm kind of prepping a competition model and then of course i'm working on my uh my uh arena of escalation pieces for the army painter we have like a local or um, i guess not a local what do we call that at inner company escalation league that we're doing um yeah. so i'm doing dark angels thus the dark angel bag and stuff like that so i gotta i gotta get going i gotta get my squad done i think i got like two weeks to finish them so Right, and that's that's all being shown on the uh, the Army Painter blog, isn't it? Yeah, so you just go to thearmypainter dot com and look at the blog link. Yeah, I think we just I think we just put up our latest like mile marker or whatever they're calling it um, with the the um, character the character figure that we're doing, 
And so the next one would be with a unit, a character in a unit as we just slow grow. It's it's nice. It's a slow grow escalation type thing. It's fun. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, Jake knows everything about a slow grow uh, escalation. 100%. It's the only way to do uh, an army, really. Dave Dave is all fast grow. Yep. Uh, it's it's more like, a, like an explosive spread more than a slow grow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it's I get it. I like I I appreciate that you appreciate the slow grow escalation. I, I like how Jake uh explain my uh waistline there as well. Um <laughs> anyway, um fantastic. So uh yeah, we can definitely uh we can go and check those out on the uh the Army Peter blog. Uh Jake, what have you been up to with hobby wise? Uh so I like I showed you guys last week. I got the I, I picked up I picked up the crew box and it's it's pretty rad. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I like unboxed it a couple of days early because technically I wasn't breaking the rules. I didn't sell any. Right. I just took my copy home. Um, yeah. <laughs> the codex is gorgeous. Uh, the rules are really fun. Like the I'm going to run just crew. Like I don't really want to run a Tau army. So, but the problem is the more I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to paint like 190 crew. I don't want to do that. So <laughs> I'm going to do mostly crew with a very small like tau auxiliary force almost um so i'm gonna run like three hammerheads and like a unit of pathfinders but i'm gonna have them all look all kind of haggard like they've been hanging out with the crew like on campaign for a while so i'm gonna have like you know tribal totems and skulls and stuff hanging off the tau dudes and i'm gonna make the tanks look all like they're um like in world war ii like they have all the stuff like on the tanks that the tau okay. normally don't do yep. um yeah. so they have a lot of like field supplies kind of thing um, but I also picked up this guy at Adepticon, the oh, limited edition crew. So I'm going to add him as well. He'll be one of my shapers, I guess. Um, and then in a couple of weeks when the rest of the, whenever we get the codex, which will probably be in like three weeks, I'm going to, you know, add some more crew rampages and stuff. Cause they're really fun. Um, but my plan is once I'm, once we're done with the tale of four warlords, which I've got about two weeks left to finish that two and a half weeks, I think. Um, but once that's done, this new project, I'm going to do this entire thing with just war paints. I'm not going to use any other paint line to do it. Um, so that should be interesting. Um, <laughs> this this weekend, I got to go to a like a mini con. It's it's not really a mini con. It's basically a bunch of my friends in the industry, people that you guys might know, like uh, folks like Matt Fantastic, who's a game designer, uh, Chris and Heather O'Neill from Ninth Level Games. Um, we kind of did like a mini like party slash hangout at like their store in uh connecticut so i drove down there hung out for the day played some of the new star wars unlimited card game um pretty fun if, if, if anybody likes magic or anything like that any kind of deck builders it's a yeah it's a star it's it's basically a star wars themed card game um well, that's it's really fun it's it's good it's a, it's a really well balanced game um the only thing right now and a lot of the people we're playing with again this is a room full of game designers and a lot of the complaints that I heard were stuff like, oh, there's not enough cards. And I was like, right, because they've only done one set. But yeah. when we were at Gamma, they mapped out the sort of path for this game. And they have the next seven sets lined up, which is the next like two plus years of launches. Um, but it's it, it's it's really fun. The art's really cool. And it, it has a lot of characters from kind of all over the place. Like there's uh, characters from... Uh, was it Rebels? And there's characters from all like the classic films, and there's some characters from like some of the prequel stuff. And they're just gonna they have access to the whole license. But it was it was really fun. It was it was a fun game to play, and it was good to hang out with everybody. Um, and then the work related part that kind of came in was I was going through. Uh, so Trish has a back room. Trish and Matt own the store, so they have a back room. And she was like, "Oh yeah, like this is all the stuff we have." And they have they had two stacks of of boxes that are almost as tall as I am that were just Warhammer 40k battle forces. And I said, how did you get these? Oh, we bought them a while ago. We don't have a huge Warhammer community. And I was like, I will happily take those off your hands. So we worked something out and I <laughs> took them home. So I, they're all the battle forces from Christmas 2021, I think. So there's like the, there's the orc one that comes with like the, the jet and like the guy on the bike and like a bunch of boys there's the plague marine one that has like the the big plague marine, plague marine tank, and then the the three little Nurgle golf cart things, and then uh, there's the like it it was just crazy. I was like, what? like uh, I'm like I will sell all this stuff this week. So I brought it back, <laughs> put it in the system. We've already sold like three or four of them. Oh, that's rad. For like a day. So we might have to talk after the show. 
A hundred percent. I got you. I got you, Sam. I got you, Sam. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, how about you, Kat? What have you been up to? I have been um, studio wise, just tearing down my studio and packing it up. And I am actually um, <laughs> just took my first couple of loads to my new storage unit. So it's so weird to go through everything. But the nice thing is, is I've actually been able to go through all of my paint collection and I've got it all boxed up to go away so I can just put out all of my army painter going forward. So when I put my studio back together, it'll all be just army painter. I'm right. so excited about that. Like cool. the, it's reducing my clutter down from thousands of paints. <laughs> to, well, I mean, I don't know. I, am I exaggerating, Caleb? Is, no, could it be, no. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I'm like, I, I, I actually need around. to check that. It could be thousands, literally. all Because they decorate my walls. It's part of my environment. It's yeah. very pretty, though. It was all color-coded. and it was, like, it was very nice. It was very pretty, but I've used two bottles of it in the last you know, five oh, years. Right. So, <laughs> it looks pretty. So I've been going through all that, and then I, I need to find a good home for all of these um, paints. So. Right. But on the actual hobby side of it, um, Caleb and I are, have been kind of tossing around the idea of going to Monty this year. Okay. And there's a piece that I have that's in my studio um, that I kind of want to tackle. It's a really big piece. It's a huge this big. And I would absolutely love to tackle that with an airbrush. So that's not getting going to get packed away and stored away for any length of time. It's actually going to make its way back out and into my studio. Cool. And... Yeah, so this has been really fun. It's been an cool. incredible journey to actually tear down my studio. I have a massive studio because I do so many different types of arts. And so it's been been really revealing how much money I've spent on things I haven't touched more than once. <laughs> that happens. I, I, know I, don't you're be, I don't know what you're talking about. I could be retired by now, I'm pretty sure. I'm really starting to feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, but would you, would you have had as much fun? Not way. nearly. Yeah, I would have been doing this anyway, right? There we go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Uh, just um, jumping back into the uh, chat because a lot of people are super active in there now. Um, oh, we have a Carl. Uh, we do have a Carl. Uh, <laughs> yes, Billy <laughs> said hi. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Scott says, Dave, Dave, I got my volume seven slipcase in the mail. Glad you got it, Scott. Fantastic. Uh, Brett Abbott's here. Hi, Brett. Fantastic. Uh, thanks very much for clicking the notification button. Sean Gleason has joined us. Excellent. Uh, Dave Hummel says, I'm super slow grow. <laughs> uh, excellent. Um, and Jeff says, waiting till the last week to finish is not slow grow, is it? No, it's not. That, that's I mean, that's my policy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, We've got uh, Sean says he's working on uh, Legion's Imperi uh, Legion Imperialis stuff. Uh, Trevor says Charity says hello to everyone. Hello. Hi, Charity. Hi, Charity. Uh, hopefully in uh, about a month's time, we'll be able to talk to, with uh, Charity. I have Charity on the show talking about uh, preparing for next Adepticon's hobby nice. on our schedule, which will be super cool. Uh, Scott's, Scott also points out that this is the second time someone has dropped to two weeks without paying reverence to the official build paint play way to say, Two weeks. <laughs> so we have like the original uh, total recall. Two weeks. Uh, if you have to say have to say two weeks. Uh, Carl is here. Hi, Carl. Uh, is back from uh, Australia. So we'll have to talk about that at some stage. Uh, Jez is kit bashing Dark Age characters for an RPG set in the Beowulf Age of Heroes. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, using the Pendragon rules. Nice. Oh, so rad. Um. Yeah, paints are weird. You can buy one or two at a time, and then suddenly you realize you have hundreds of them. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, Shaw was out of the room and said, uh, he heard you and said, that sounds like Cat. Which is, <laughs> is. So Carl and uh, Shaw are obviously listening to the show. Fantastic. Um, awesome. Uh, I see Josh in there, too. Got Josh Sawyer from IC. Yep. Fantastic. Welcome, Josh. Uh, awesome. So I think we're caught up. Oh, yes, we do need to talk about Australia, Carl. But we'll do that like separate to the show. 
Maybe we'll record something separately. We could just we could do a whole episode just about Australia. Yeah, yeah, you could do a whole Australia Carl show. Oh my gosh, I would so I'd be love willing to, to be that. the on site reporter for that. <laughs> Fantastic. True. You might need to go I, back to do that. Caleb, yeah. that'll be great. I'll be in the studio while we while we drop you onto the death world that is Australia. <laughs> I'm down. I love he's, spiders. He's from the death world. He's out of the he's born in the desert. Yeah. Drop him in the middle of his home territory. He'll be a happy camper. Fantastic. <laughs> we'll do that. Um, awesome. Okay. Uh, to also back to it, uh, hobby wise, I got to uh, play against uh, this guy. Oh, ah, there he is, the man himself. Yep. Jeff Smith, the old wolf. Uh, so this is part of, uh, it was basically Jeff drove my, I uh, drove the, Battlefront van van back from Adepticon and brought my army back. So he delivered it to me on Saturday at games and stuff. Uh, and we played a game of uh, 40k. So my Space Marines against his Wolf Spear. Uh, I changed up my list. I didn't run Brutalis Dreadnoughts. I didn't run the um, Repulsor Executioner. Uh, instead, I went with the um, Invicta Tactical War Suits. And I just had one Repulsor, uh, which had my blade gun in it. Uh, and it was a very different experience running <laughs> that sort of list. Uh, Jeff had obviously uh, been doing a lot of reading, a lot of thinking about how he uh, was going to run his army and surprised me on the first turn by uh, bringing his Thunderwolves on uh, and charging me in the flank, wiping out my uh, heavy intercessor squad his Brutalis was able to get in and wipe out one of my uh, Eliminator squads. Yeah, they'll and do that. All, all of a sudden, I had like I could remove a lot of those cards from behind the, <laughs> that back line. Uh, but I managed to uh, sort of castle up a little bit and and hold out. Uh, when we when we called the game, uh, Jeff was ahead uh, twenty five to fifteen, so uh, significant victory there for the Wolf Spear. But uh, again, it was another cool, uh, cool day just hanging out with Jeff. We went and got uh, mission barbecue afterwards, so Aww. very nice, very nice. So uh, that I think was oh, there's a um, one shot there. So at this point here, well, this is just before my Invicta Tactical War Suit exploded, uh, killed one of the Thunderwolf cavalry, uh, killed my Apothecary Biologus. And also took the final wound off Jeff's Brutalis Dreadnought. Well done. Unfortunately, the Brutalis didn't explode and continue the chain reaction somewhere else. But well, hopefully, hopefully your uh, your troops there on the bottom left hand corner were able to gun down the captain and the last remaining Wolf Rider. Uh, sadly, they not they did not. They failed. Uh, my Blade Guard veterans failed to take down that captain. That Wolf Lord on the on the Thunder Wolf was tragic. Tragic. I tell you, let's not dwell on that though. <laughs> it's because you, you didn't have you didn't have Jeff's favorite stratagem. Only in death does duty end. That's the best stratagem in the game. <laughs> oh, we have to talk about that after the show. There was a there's something a little something that we didn't understand correctly during that game. Okay, we'll talk about it. Uh, but yes. <laughs> uh, so hobby wise, uh, I will also say after last week's conversation with Sean Sutter um, about Relic Blade and Sludge, I went uh, and bought. Both PDFs for Sludge, the rule book, and I the, saw. the nations. Uh, and then I uh, went and checked out all of the STLs, and I bought all of the STLs for the Keth army. Uh, and uh, and you've already a, you've already painted them all, right? You've already painted like two thousand points of Keth. No, I haven't. I haven't because I had to wait until today for some resin to arrive. But they're on a there's a three D printer somewhere with eighteen Keth line infantry hanging upside down. From it. Uh, so next week, hopefully, I'll have um, a, a few test models painted for that. But super uh, fun and exciting to go through that whole acquiring stuff part of the uh, the hobby, all of the collecting, particularly because it was all digital. So it was very very interesting part. I call that I call that the dragon aspect of the hobby, where you're just you're just adding to your horde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was definitely that. It's like it's over a, um, I think it's over a gigabyte of STL files. So, 
Like, I think this might be some kind of survival tactic too. <laughs> yes. I think like I'm I'm really stuck on this theory lately. I work around all men in this industry. Like there's yep. not very many women I get to work with, literally. And Caleb and I alone have been doing it for 10 years together almost. Um coming up on 10 years. <laughs> and I really, really have a theory about this. I think men literally live the fountain of youth. Like you all just surround yourself with toys, refuse to grow up, grab it like by six years old and don't let go. And you keep it going by surrounding yourself with more and more cool toys. But absolutely convinced it keeps every single one of you just young and youthful. It's the it's and the it's, it's the it's Peter brilliant. Pan you're, it's the Peter Pan mentality. You're investing <laughs> in your youth. It's or investing in it's something there. It's it's magic. I'm investing absolutely convinced. Youth. Yeah. No, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> That's why I do it. I know when uh, when uh, we, we found out, uh, my wife was going to have our um, our second child, and we found out it was a girl. So people were like, "Dave, how, how are you going to be with like three girls in the house?" And I said, I "I'm more worried about Julie having three kids in the house." Me being the third. <laughs> uh, I think we, it's awesome. It, and quite honestly, it's probably why I choose or prefer to work with men. Right. I'm living vicariously through all of you, like in a constant state of my existence. Or you just like babysitting. <laughs> huh? Or you just like babysitting. <laughs> Could be that. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. This, see, like, I because I work both in, like, not just the miniature side of things. Now I work in, like, gaming in general. I know a lot of women that are in the gaming industry, but not necessarily in the miniatures industry. So yeah, I, I agree. It's, it is nuts. Like for the longest time, I remember going to one of my first managers meetings at GW and it was like, all the store managers were, were men, all the district managers were men, all the regional directors were men. The VPs were all men. The, there were two women that were there. One was uh, uh, Michelle, who was like our, what was Michelle? She was like the the CFO, right? Yeah, I think. And then, um, um, no, but yeah. And then, and then Desi, who was like one of, was like the head of HR. Oh no, sorry, Michelle was the head of HR, and then and Desi was like, uh, like her like assistant HR director. Um, mm -hmm. and I was like, there was that part of my brain that has worked at corporate America long enough where I was like, oh, okay, so that the the two the two women that are working with us are both in HR, which means it's their job to make sure we are not screwing up. I was like, that's kind of <laughs> perfect <laughs> on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Matt Bowles says, if you can't nest in it, it's not a hoard. I'm nice. all about right? nesting. All about the nesting. Um, fantastic. Uh, and Josh says, uh, I'm feeling suddenly defensive, but also grateful. Oh, yeah, that's oh, a great line. I meant that. <laughs> Like in the biggest jealous complimentary way ever. Yep. Uh, and Patrick says, I can confirm this theory. <laughs> <laughs> I've been judged. Oh no. Uh, Jez, Jez, Jez music about it. growing old and growing up are very different things. Like, yeah. yeah. I can attest that I'm still a 16 year old girl and, a, and I'm pretending to be an adult, like at almost all times. Yeah. <laughs> um, Greg says, I think Kat just inadvertently is now being assigned the <laughs> responsible adult in the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. Fantastic. It's Fantastic. about to get wild then. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So, uh, fantastic. Uh, oh, uh, and Josh has pointed out lots of uh, women at Adepticon this year. A bit of searching through our side um, and Twitch reveals a lot of female hobbyists. So, yeah. There, there, all, there always is like Adepticon is is very Adepticon is a good mix, especially the last two days, like the weekend. There's always a, a really good mix. Gen Con is another show that that's that's pretty that's a pretty good mix. Um, San Diego Comic Con is another one that's you know very like very very mixed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it I think it depends on the show, but but it's it's changing for the better, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. Like like yeah. I, I don't need it to just be like. I know that there's a very, very small percentage of the community that would like it to just remain like middle-aged white dudes. And I'm fine with it not just being middle-aged white dudes. I think that all of us are fine with it not being just middle-aged white dudes. As a middle-aged white dude, I agree. Yeah. 
I, th I find the community very welcoming. I don't find that maybe, and maybe it's because I'm on the hobby side too. I never get grief or um, for being female in a mostly male environment. I never feel like I am not accepted into that, like at all. I do notice that there are a lot more women coming into it and I'm more in the kind of managing running role of things and always kind of have been not so much on the, I'm a functioning artist out there that everybody's competing against or something. So it's a little bit different role sets there, but I'm finding some of my friends are women that are starting to make those influences too. Charity's one. She's starting yep. to work on working on the hobby and the hobby program and the hobby collective. And that's so exciting to see. So exciting. That's, that is breaking the ceiling for us. Like it's one thing to be in the hobby. It's another thing to work in the hobby uh, yep. in invisible roles. Like army painter just really, I, they didn't do it on purpose, but they nailed it. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I think I think not to, not to tangent too hard, but like, <laughs> one of the like I, one of my favorites so I'll, I'll i'll tell you the story and it's it's just it always cracks me up and i know some people in this have probably heard this story before but so back when i was in corporate america and i won't say what company i was with but uh my boss comes up to me and goes hey you're gonna be on the diversity council and i went me and he goes yeah and i was like uh i'm a middle-aged straight married white dude who owns a house like why am I going to be on the, like, I'm the enemy. Why am I going to be on the diversity council? And he just goes, you'll see. And I went, okay. So we go to our breakout and there's a room of like, you know, several hundred managers. We're all standing in a room. And my boss goes, okay, I want everybody to stand up. So our, this is our regional vice president. We all stand up. He's like, I'm going to answer a bunch of questions. And as I answer them, if they, if they apply to you, you can remain standing. If they don't, I want you to sit down. So there's like, I don't know, 1200 of us standing in this room. So he's like, if there's somebody on your staff who doesn't look and identify as you do, remain standing. And about half the room sits down. And I was like, that's problematic. And then he's like, if you have more than one person that fits that criteria, remain standing. People sit down. And the questions continue. If you have more than three people, if you have someone who's in, in, a, in a key holder or a management position. And then the final one was, if there are more people that do not look and identify as you, than there are who who do remain standing. So now there's like me and 12 people standing up. And it's a pretty diverse group other than me. And my boss looks over at me and winks. And I was like, so I go to the meeting and people are like, oh, well, you know, we have, we have people in our district who talk about how, oh, it's hard to hire the right people. And the reason why I'm a straight white dude and I have a bunch of straight white dudes working for me is that that's all I get is applications. And like they're like, so how did you do it? And I was like, I wasn't trying to make like the United Colors of Benetton ad. I just hired the best people for the job. Like it, it was that simple. It was like, I interviewed 13 people. These two people had the best qualifications. Had my, I always have someone else interview as well, like an assistant manager or a key holder. And I get their opinions and we kind of contrast and go, you know, what do we think? And then we make the best decision, not just for the store, but for the team. And that's always been my mentality. But it was just so strange to me that a lot of people don't think like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just wacky. But again, to Kat, to your point, obviously the folks at Army Painter are the same way. And they're like, well, we wanted the best people for the positions. Mm -hmm. And that's why they've hired, you know, you and Caleb and Adam. I think they went out and they were like, we, we're, we're building our super team. We want these pieces. So mm -hmm. 100%. But it, it, it's just weird to me that more people don't like, I just assumed everyone thinks like that. No. Yeah. I think we see it more in general. I think it's just um, population at this point. Like, really getting more women into the hobby and then in uh, positions of being in roles in the, in the hobby. And I think it's, it's very welcome. I, I've been in it for so long. I don't have an, ever have an unwelcomed feeling. Um, yeah. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> no, no, you're good. All good. Sorry, guys. All good. All good. Speaking of the, uh, the team, uh, I mentioned that this was going to be uh, one of the. Oh questions. yeah, let's see the photo. So this <laughs> is the the photo of Team USA, which I snagged from the uh, the Army Painter blog as well. Uh, so Adam, Cat, Caleb, Tyler. Uh, <laughs> as a Adam, huge as a huge metal fan who routinely throws up the metal the metal horns like in my photos, this made my day. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> because everybody is uh, throwing them up. Uh, yeah, that's that's why. Yeah. That's why Luger Day. I, just just like it, they're just doing it. I was like, this is the best. Like, of course, like metal. They're like, we're Team USA, also metal. And I was like, yeah, that's great. Like, chocolate and peanut butter. You got two of my favorite things. Like, right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> USA. <laughs> talk to us about um, about uh, this group. So, Kat, mid last year, you joined the Team USA. Um, a little over a year ago. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Tyler was a little bit later in the year. Yeah. Tyler was the one that was about mid year last year. And um, I started my last show last year with GW was Adepticon, but I was already transitioning over. I just, I had just committed myself prior. Right. Um, and then I think Tyler came in in July or August, I think. If I remember right. It wasn't very long after me. We've pretty much been there almost the same amount of time. Right. Cool. And Tyler's doing all of the uh, social media uh, mm -hmm. work. With and he does, he's an incredible graphic designer. He does a lot of supporting um, the stuff I have done for events. Cool. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's, oh, and he's such a brilliant writer. Such a brilliant writer, and Tyler also does um, in our blog because he's do running a blog on our website now, and in that he's putting up a lot of um, tutorials too, and those tutorials are similar to what he had on his personal page, so it's they're just so high quality. I'm enjoying him every time. I get really excited because I get to see him before everybody else does in the background. Right. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay, we get to we get to review them for you. Cool. Nice. Cool. <laughs> now they are they are very cool. I Tyler can really distill down um, some cool paint jobs and uh, cool paint recipes into um, a very small sort of space. It's, the uh, dude is a beast too. Oh my gosh, I I think that he's painting when he's sleeping. I'm trying to figure it out because he cranks out so much work and. Um, Oh my goodness, he does so much work with writing and copy and all that. And then all of a sudden there'll be a new model in the feed too in our work feed. And yep. it's, he, he, he must be he must be a he must be a student of the Dave Taylor way of uh painting. It's a and they're so high quality. <laughs> it's he's a beast. He is an absolute beast. It's it's so fun to watch. Yeah. That's no, awesome. Awesome. And uh Caleb, you joined the team in December. I mean, January was my official start, um, but I went over to Denmark in in December and got to play with the Fanatics a lot more, uh, meet the team over there, and yeah, that definitely sealed the deal there. What a what a great company! What a great, amazing team over there. the The Denmark side of Army Painter is just really awesome. So, yep. yeah. They've um they've grown quite a bit over the last uh, few years as well, haven't they? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, haven't you? Like the Army Painter team. Um, so I know uh, some like early on in the the pandemic that um, there was that sort of a quick switch over to bottling uh, hand sanitizers. Yep. We we brought all that stuff into the shop. Yeah. Yep. That was we a had, huge uh, endeavor. We had that down here at uh, Games and Stuff as well. But, oh, um, I know uh, anybody who's been sort of following the uh, the blog or the um, social media posts or the, the YouTube channel will know that uh, so there's a, um, much like uh, Warhammer World has Bugmans, uh, the Army Painter HQ has Dippets, is that right? Dippets Dungeon, yep. It's dungeon so uh which is a bar slash uh gaming hangout man i want to go to denmark <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun um so uh yeah i think it's definitely um definitely cool that uh the way that the things are growing and developing um obviously but um one of the things that we wanted to talk about tonight apart from uh sorry i just noticed that matt, matt bowles had said adam's jacket is sharp it is it is uh -huh. so always sharp. 
Carl, Carl said this is the metallic paint promo shot. So what you guys need to do is make a metal paint set that's just black and then like all the metal colors. Yeah. <laughs> all the shades of silver. That's a good idea. Yeah. But right. black. There has to be black in the metal paint set. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I can ask if you got any blacker. Yeah. Um, but and it has to have eleven paints, not ten. <laughs> the set goes to 11 yeah nice. it, has a, it has a bit more uh one of the things i wanted to talk about uh tonight was i know that um that cat we've, we've spoken about it but uh you're still going through developing what the the hobby programs what the hobby offerings uh are going to be so it isn't quite a system as such just yet um uh, but adepticon was one of the um oh sorry lvo is probably one of the first times that you got to uh mess around with um a a program of sorts uh and then following that up at adepticon um mm -hmm. what what can you and uh caleb what can you and cat tell us about uh that i guess how does it differ about, from you know, what everybody else is doing about the new program yeah well we've actually this is kind of pretty exciting because this year is going to give us a lot of um change just in what we're releasing in our own product lines so on the 20th we are releasing um our racks are going to go on the floor um as uh, are going to roll out in the um in stores on the 20th so people are going to be able to get their stuff in individual bottles and things like that which is going to open up so much um opportunity for us in our booths that we haven't had prior to this. Um, we started doing sales, digital sales at our booth at Adepticon, which is like a huge growth step for us. And eventually when we want to be able to move over to having product on hand to sell directly and moving in the direction of having the individual racks on the, on the sales floors with everybody rolling out on the 20th means for the rest of the season, as our friendly stores like Jake's and different people that are that have booths that carry our product, we'll be able to actually funnel them over to the stores that are at the events with us and people will be able to pick up their paints right there on site and can buy them individually. It's going to be so huge. It's it's um, opens up a lot of traffic and opportunity for us to actually get to see people and have them come in and engage with us. So, which I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get everybody to come in and say hi and give me a hug. So. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't wait. We have, we have so many pre-orders. Like. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I, I like, the weirdest thing to me is there's so many people that instead of ordering like the mega paint set or the complete paint set, like we have, I have six or seven orders where people have just ordered like 70 paints and it's like, I need one of this, two of this, one of this, one of this. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be fun to pick all those orders, but whatever. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> like the good news is people are really excited about it. So it, we've also yeah. been talking it up to like everybody who comes in the store, they're like, oh, your war paint rack looks really sad. And I was like, yeah, cause I'm not restocking it. Like fanatics coming out soon. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's the product itself is great. Like you guys are doing an awesome job, like championing it and showing it off and letting people get their hands on it. Um, but the, it, it, that's also, at least in my experience, it's always easier to do that when the product is genuinely a great product. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, does that make a difference? <laughs> it's, it's a huge difference. I and think I need to not go there. Josh says uh, that's also a lot better than forcing vendors to be blacked out on your products. Yeah. Absolutely. That shows, yeah, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, no, we actually we do as much as we can. In fact, I'm working with um, kind of in the background with I'm not going to mention them right now in case in case we end up not being able to, to functionally get in there. But we're partnering up with a company right now um, for Gen Con to get in onto the vendor floor with them. And it'll be their store. It'll be their product. But we'll go help them sell it. I mean, 100% will be there for it. And in fact, we'll do demos if they have room for that. Um, one of us will be in there to do demos for them too. So we, we're we not competing against our store owners, like legitimately, which is super, super exciting. That makes it really fun to play with everybody on the floor in the, in the vendor hall when you have your product out there. Super yeah. fun. Absolutely. 
Uh, Scott says, <laughs> "Just cracked me up. I, sh I shouldn't have read. I was reading it while Cat was talking, and I was like, oh my god." <laughs> He said, hey, are you guys bribing hobbyists to become exclusively army beta users? I am for sale. <laughs> I've been waiting to sell out for 48 years. <laughs> just, just take, just, just take, take some time to consider it. <laughs> that wins the internet for me today. I can go to bed happy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going to sell out, it's a good one to sell out to. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, and Matt Bowles. Matt works for uh, Alliance. He's a salesman uh, at Alliance Game Distributors. And uh, <laughs> he said, uh, we we're so excited to start shipping racks soon. So, oh, yeah. that's amazing. And uh, he also seconds Scott's petition. Thanks. Um, cool. Uh, I guess, uh, but moving on, uh, talking about the, the hobby side of things uh, as well. Uh, when I say the hobby, I mean the um, the demos, the painting classes, um, all the, the kinds of things that um, CK Studios, who we've been talking about in a little bit, um, are kind of known for. Um, at Adepticon here, for example, uh, the Friday seminars, uh, basically it was a, essentially like a whole day of seminars. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm really disappointed that I missed that it was Danishes and demos. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Me, I, I love myself a good Danish, but uh, yeah. I would have spun by. <laughs> you had but, been you had been horribly disappointed when you walked in and they were actually Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, well, maybe not horribly disappointed, but just the, the finding the Danishes was um was more of a play on words because the Danes were in from Denmark. Sure. And they were gonna be in the room. So I was instead of it reading Danes, <laughs> Danes and demos, it was Danishes and demos. Which was like, okay, I think I need to go get some coffee and donuts at least. Because there's going to be some expectations here from the Americans. Yeah, and we had quite the discussion with the with the, our, our team over in Denmark about oh, what a Danish did. actually is. Which was surprising. I didn't realize that that term Danish is a very American term. Yeah, yeah. there are not Danishes in Denmark as far as, oh, sorry, we have a, a little one. I keep nope. <laughs> hey, this, dog, he's you're welcome. Very, he's Mark. very, very blind and he's balding. And so he's going to just sit. His tongue is just going to fly at me as he tries to find me. See yep. it? Yep. <laughs> he, can't, he can't see me. Oh. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, guy. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. My, my, both my pups have, have spent uh, screen time on the show. So. <laughs> yeah. This is a very senior, senior, senior pup right here. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All good. So, uh, but Caleb, yep, go for it. So I was just going to talk a little bit about, yeah, the, the hobby side of what we're doing with Army Painter. Um, and this has been really fun, especially for me, coming in on the team. And, you know, we've been doing CK. We talked about that. We transitioned a little bit. We did some stuff with GW for a couple of years. Um, and it's all been pretty formulated around just kind of the basic class system and stuff like that. So we want to do something different. We want to do something fresh, something kind of new. Um, so we're really doing like kind of a multi-tiered effort for the hobby side with Army Painter. Army Painter's got a much better community presence, I feel. I think they're very involved in the community. And we want to make sure that everybody is kind of getting a taste of it. Everybody's getting to, to kind of work with Army Painter and get to see those things. So we're not just going to bury ourselves into the classrooms for the limited 12, 15, 20 students. Um, some events we will. Like at LVO, we, we did kind of full-blown classes um, to where really our presence was just there in the classroom. And then at Adepticon, uh, if you had the opportunity, we only did classes on Friday. And we, we kept it pretty limited, but the rest of the time we were in the booth doing demos, um, being out front. We all kind of worked as salesmen a little bit, but we really got to interact with just the regular con goers, the ones that don't have time to put in a bunch of a bunch of their time at a con sitting in a classroom. They want to see the con. They want to play games. And that's usually like one of the big complaints that we get, especially with CK Studios at the time was, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so busy during the day playing playing in the tournaments or, you know, doing the con things that I don't get to go do the CK stuff. And it's always, it was so formal, you know, all the formal classes and stuff like that. Um, right. So definitely watch for us as you come into the different conventions, because we'll be doing, we'll be doing um, demos. We'll be doing, um, we've got, we've got part of our factory team that's going to be out playing in the tournaments. Um, 
of course, of course, repping army painter paints out there. You're going to see wonderfully plant painted armies. Um, you're going to have, I mean, competition models being displayed at the booth, competition painters being displayed there. Displayed, I shouldn't say that, but they're painting there. You know, they're 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 really going to be able to, to interact with us. Um, we, we're planning. I, I just imagine walking up to the booth and uh, and seeing a glass case with Sam sort of squished in there, <laughs> floating in a fluid. Yeah, floating in the tank. Oh dear, that'd be bad. <laughs> yeah, we're preserving it. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really excited um, for for this new this new kind of phase, especially for me, moving into something that's going to be a lot different. Um, we're going to have paint and takes. We're going to, I mean, it's the gambit. If you're interested in taking a look at the Army Painter paints, you're interested in checking out Fanatics, or you just want to come in and paint with some painters and, you know, just kind of enjoy the hobby, we're going to have a, a huge gambit of that. Um, and I don't want to give away plans for Nova and all these other places, but, yeah, there's going to be a lot of, of interaction with the entire Army Painter team. Uh, so it's going to be really fun. That's awesome. So uh, we'll probably, um, as as your plans and programs start to uh, solidify, um, make sure you let us know so we can talk about them on the show, um, particularly as we get close to uh, things like San Diego Comic-Con and uh, uh, Nova and that kind of thing. Um, Gen Con Absolutely. as well, I guess. Um, so that'll be cool. Very cool. Um Sorry, uh, also, if you thought Scott's previous comment was um, winning the internet, he says, blind, bolding, and quick with the tongue, the Scott Radom story. Right. <laughs> I have to actually comment back on that one. <laughs> Scott, Scott is on fire tonight. Um, fantastic. Uh, we'll see how he is in two weeks. No, just kidding. Um, fantastic. The next thing uh, that we've got lined up here um, so just quick uh, shot there. Um, I stole this from uh, Thomas's page. Um, so we've got Thomas, uh, Kat, yourself, uh, Caleb, Tyler, Adam, Phil the Glacial Geek, uh, Bo in the corner there. And I'm guessing, is that Bo's son? Yeah, that's Sigur. Cool. Fantastic. So this was, uh, I'm guessing this was right at the end of Adepticon. That was actually midway. Oh, right. we still had we still had our red shirts on, so I think and Bo was still there, and Bo actually took off like on Saturday. Okay. So this was this was midway. I think this was Friday night. Yeah, I think it was Friday night. Okay. I got to I got to meet Phil. I'd never met Phil before. On I think it was, I think it was Saturday night. Saturday night, myself, Phil, and Adam went out and got uh, dinner and and drinks and got to hang out and chat for a little bit. Um, what a oh, nice guy! Like what a super nice guy. So lucky he has like and like, el like escalated to being one of my absolutely favorite human beings in the entire industry. Like <laughs> I love that man. He is so positive and so authentic and so genuinely excited in like this. Um, explosive manner <laughs> it goes out <laughs> everywhere it's like scattershot it is so fun to be around so fun to be around yeah, Absolutely i think we, love him. dave dave got to meet him too and i think we agreed we're gonna we're gonna swap shows so he's gonna come on our show we'll have him on and then we're gonna go on his show and um yeah. but yeah what a what a nice guy he was he was so much fun to hang out with and me him and adam trading stories for like an hour or so was was pretty entertaining so <laughs> oh i'm so happy to hear that right good for you lucky you how fun. Thanks. That's awesome. That's cool. Uh, fantastic. And I, I said that we were going to jump backwards in time. Oh, wow. So this was, uh, I found this um, buried deep, 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 deep in the CK Studios social media. I didn't tell Kat that I was going to put this photo up there, but uh, I believe this was in uh, Philly preparing for an airbrushing 101 class. Wow. I look so young there. That's crazy. I'm assuming the Philly giveaway is the guy wearing the Eagles jersey in the foreground. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, I think the caption for the photo was "Cat preparing for airbrushing 101 in Philly." <laughs> so, <laughs> Probably. No, that is that's me still. But uh, fantastic. So uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, so Caleb and Cat C and K CK Studios. I'm guessing that's what the CK stands for. It's not for something else, right? Mm-hmm. 
no okay uh so talk to us about uh ck studios and and how that all sort of came about and what the what the mission was for ck do you want to take that caleb yeah i mean man ck studio <laughs> ck <laughs> studios kind of came about on a drive home from kingdom con um i was working with um with chung and the WGC. Oh WG, thank you. <laughs> WG, <laughs> and we were kind of developing a program back in the back at the time we were developing a program that we were calling the um uh what were we what were we calling it? The some kind of mentors? influencers, something yeah, it, it was it was gonna be a mentors program. Um before the idea, there were yeah, mentors before there were influencers, it was yeah. a, kind of an idea of mentorship. Influence. Yeah, and and what the idea was is um you know, we had a group of painters and I learned from amazing painters. When I got into the hobby, I had a couple of golden demon winner painters that, that just kind of took me under their wing and kind of taught me how to paint and show me a lot of stuff. And um, we were developing a program to where we were going to take established artists, um, a couple of really great painters that were all good friends. We were all just kind of a painting group. And what we do is try to make ourselves available online to work with people that were learning how to paint, um, you know, kind of developing those things. Like you see, Matt Bowles has a question here about uh, in our experience about how do painters progress with the new paint, stuff like that. And that's what we want to do is we want to show people how to progress and gain that knowledge if they didn't have like painters available to them at home. Um, so we have this idea of these mentor program and uh, along the way, this this um what would you call it this this facebook page group this facebook page group came up um called uh the hobby hangout and that's what cat was running and i saw it and i was like man what a great way to get people together is get on this hobby get these established painters to come in and work and be active in this online community um, so I started talking with Cat about it. We started working together. And of course, we were doing some stuff with a little bit of hobby hangout mix, a little bit of WGC mix. And um, we went on to, um, to Kingdom Con. And it wasn't quite the show I'd hoped it would be. Um, we were having a little bit of inner turmoil with the WGC stuff. And um, it was kind of time to, to kind of branch out on my own and kind of develop more of the community painting side, less of the monetizing side. Um, so we were driving home and Kat was like, man, why don't you just go do it yourself? And I was thinking I was working with Justin from um, Secret Weapon and stuff and I was going to kind of work with him to build a program like that. And Kat's like, well, why don't you just do it yourself? And if you want to do this, I'll work with you. And I was like, all right, let's give it a try. And yeah, we, we started kind of trying to get out there and do community-based classes. That was kind of the start of the CK Studios um, class system was just to go out and try to try to make it relatively affordable. Uh, me and me and Kat were in the unique position at the time that the hobby was not our like uh, bread and potatoes, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't, it wasn't our main job. We, yep. we have full-time jobs, stuff like that. So we're able to put more effort into the hobby side without it having to have the, I guess, the financial burden of it, um, which allowed us to be really, I don't know, what would you call free with what we were doing? <laughs> we were a lot of I mean, we couldn't be, be really free because, of course, you know, some things you just can't afford to do. But it allowed us to build a program that um, we could really develop for – teaching communities. And that's why we went into the stores instead of concentrating on trying to do stuff in our studios or something like that. We got out and we wanted to go make it into stores like Alpha Omega and stuff like that. Cause what we were finding was, is that we were bridging a lot of the painters in the community. There, there'd be painters that would come from six, six different areas, six different stores that would come in and they would, they would make friendships in the store. They'd make friendships with the store owners and it built that community. And when we'd leave, we'd see that those areas were a little stronger in their painting community, in their hobby community. And that was kind of our, our goal, our effort. And then, of course, you know, we're at all the conventions, so we, we expanded there. But we tried to not – we tried to give, like, more fresh offerings, I guess we'd say. So we developed um, not only our big workshops that were meant to 
be in stores and develop those communities. But then we did kind of more like the light event stuff. And that was conventions and um, smaller venues, local venues, stuff like that. So, yeah, that was kind of, I think that's good in a nutshell. Huh? <laughs> it was, it was definitely super cool. I was just, while, while you were explaining, I was scrolling through your photos on Facebook and I went back because I was trying to remember when you guys were in our store. So it says December 16th of 2018. And there's a ton of photos of you of you guys doing the, the classes and and I know that Adam, my, my original business partner Adam Pratt had who Dave knows had done a great job like getting everything ready and whatever. And we had only been in that space for like three months. We we moved in, I think, like the end of August. So stuff is just everywhere. So I was I was so thankful we were able to get into the big space instead of our original space. So you could have more people there. But yeah, looking back in retrospect, I'm like, man, we could have done such a better job, like getting everything set up and ready to go. Um, <laughs> but there were so many people there. And, and and as a credit to you guys, everybody looks like they're having a good time. We got nothing but positive feedback about you guys and what a great job you did and, and how much they learned. And we still have people that are part of our community, like on our community page and that pop in that were in that class. And granted, like you said, we had some, some guys drove from like Pittsburgh like states and states away, not even regions away. They're not even in New England, and they drove to our store for that. So it's I was just saying, like hmm? I was going to say in in August of 2020, I think you were scheduled to go to uh, back to um, Alpha Omega, and I was going to make the trip up to Boston, see your store for the first time, Jake, and take the class. But stupid COVID. <laughs> yeah, what happened in 2020? Why did that get sidetracked? Like no. I think we all just oh took a break. God, Everyone just took a break. That was so awful. We went from having an entire year worth of pre-planned workshops with so many wonderful people. It lined up to get to go spend time with so many wonderful people. Um, oh, that oh, was COVID crazy. was such a COVID was such a bummer. Like it just ruined everybody's time. You're like, man, this is the worst. Wash your hands. It so it was so <laughs> heartbreaking. And I think it, yeah. Caleb really nailed it on the head too for us um, going, it became so important to us. And we have had over time, everybody from every direction hit us for Patreons, YouTube channels that kind of get digital. And Caleb and I really always kind of stuck true to this. And we were about a certain message, a certain e experience. Um, and it was about literally bringing people together. And because we weren't driven by a need to make an income out of it, we got to stay in that niche that we created and then um, really foster it. And so we, we have generational students now and we have generational students that are coming back and saying, okay, you guys, there's been enough of a break here. Um, we're ready. We, you guys need to get this going again. We've been waiting for a few years. Um, like, like I need my 102. Like, it, and we're getting that kind of, that's really been coming around now. And I think also because we're out in the kind of more um, in the open with Army Painter, so many eyes on Army Painter right now that people are like, oh, they're doing stuff again. Oh, I bet if we talk to him, we can get him to come out to our store now. <laughs> and guess what? Caleb's actually hitting me almost every day with, okay, we got to do this again. Okay, we got to do this again. Okay, we got to run. No, I'm really serious. Seven people asked me today. So, I, yeah, that's it's such a, th oh my gosh. And Caleb and I love that. It is such a fun thing to talk to artists right now and really to impress on them that there's a lot to be said for the legacy we're creating. Our age group, how long we've been in the hobby, actually being artists that influence other people, um, to take ownership of what that is in this community. Like, there's some toxic stuff that goes on, and you don't have to um, be a part of that. And I think also bringing community together has been a huge legacy thing for Caleb and I. It's literally what we're leaving behind is how many people get to be bigger and better at their own experience. And you can't, I, don't, I can't quantify that. Like <laughs> you can't put a dollar on that for me. And I don't think you ever could for Caleb. There was, it was why we were doing it. 
it was literally why we were doing it. And um, that, I think the older I get becomes really important to me because it literally is becoming our legacy together. Legacy, legacy is really important. I, I think, I, it, like you said, I think that it's not like, just for everybody watching and listening at home, it's not like any of us are like on death's door. Like we're, we're good. No, no, we're, no. we're at the 50 yard line, I figure. But like, but what, but what are you going to spend your time <laughs> doing, you know? I think yeah. one of the, one of the best lines I ever heard, I was at a, I was at, I forget what convention I was at. And another store manager, a guy in, in the UK uh, named David was, he made a really great statement and, and he was talking about something very negative in the industry, but it's such a great statement. He was talking about how like, you know, fascism and people being in cells and people being intolerant, all this stuff, all that stuff sort of develops and grows in darkness. And our job is to be the lighthouse. And I was like, that's such a great way to look at that. Like I always try to view things that way. And I think that's, that's, I think that's part of the reason why we all get along and we're all friends is because it like, like recognizes like, and, and it's so much easier for us to kind of band together to keep the turds out of our industry. Like, and I do the same thing in my store, which is in the seven years we've been open, I can count on basically like one and a half hands, how many people <laughs> I've had to ban from my store. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a good thing. Like, I don't want that to be a big yeah. number, but it also means that it is part of my job to make sure that everyone's good time is not ruined by a single turd that managed to like get through the door. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to take that hit and keep everybody else having a good time. And it, it sounds like you and Caleb and, and I know Dave is as well, but you and Caleb very much have like taken that as part of like the fabric of what you're doing. And mm -hmm. like you said, the fact that this wasn't like a, oh, we need to do this to pay the bills. It was like, we just want to spread this like fun, positive thing that we really like. And all mm -hmm. these other people also really like, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Plus when we do that, I get to fire Caleb like every day. <laughs> <laughs> fired. It's, it's one of my favorite ways to start the day. It's like coffee. You're fired. Coffee. You're fired. But we go to work at Army Painter, and Adam like immediately stripped those rights from me. Because yeah, you have you need executive approval now. Technically, Adam is my manager. Like, like I'm yeah. I'm air quoting like he really is. But in this <laughs> moment, I'm just going to be snarky about it, and he's technically my manager. But I don't know if you were paying attention while we were at Adepticon, Caleb, because Bo gave me back my rights. Uh oh. And he said, I can fire you anytime I want to now. I would say as a, as a former corporate HR manager, I would tell you this, some language you can always use is you are Caleb, you are temporarily suspended without pay. Oh, so that's, that's pending that's investigation. Pending yeah. invest oh, it's, it's way worse. <laughs> <Pending> <laughs> investigation. Yeah. yeah. I'm you're, always you're, pending you're temporarily suspended without pay pending investigation. <laughs> I would just be constantly under investigation. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, awesome. it's all about the language it's all about the language it's, it's not necessarily you know what you say it's how you say it so it's all like it's all in the phrasing i didn't get in trouble i didn't i, I didn't fire caleb like he definitely is not fired not why fired. isn't he here today oh he's, he's temporarily just, suspended, he's without pay. Pay. <laughs> suspended without pay is that the corporate way of putting someone in the corner for a little bit so yep. so like the, the in in the corporate world like let's say let's say i get a report from cat that dave may have done something wrong uh-huh. I don't want to just fire them. Everybody always thinks that HR is is like looking out for you. They're not. HR's job yeah. is to make sure the company doesn't get in trouble. Uh -huh. So to cover to cover your ass, basically, I would suspend Dave <laughs> while we conduct an investigation to see if the if the allegations are true. And if they are, Dave is then permanently separated from the company. If they're well. not true, Dave is brought back from suspension and then he gets paid for the suspension because it was like it was just an investigation. It's yep. the best. It's like it's the ultimate corporate. Like it's a timeout. It's like we're gonna put Dave in timeout while we exactly. figure out this is real. Like yeah, that's you're 100 right. That's what it is. <laughs> oh wow! Is is there any like a way to take advantage of that? Like you don't even have to ask for time off or leave for that kind of shenanigans, right? You just I mean, you out. could basically you you could definitely if you had a partner, like you could get Dave to make a report to Bo or Adam that you did something wrong, and then Cat would be temporarily suspended pending investigation and then you could do whatever you want and they'd be like oh it turned out it wasn't real and then you just come back and you're like cool i got paid <laughs> adam i'm sorry i know you're watching this this is not me that was jake that was jake <laughs> um 
<laughs> Greg says, I need you guys to never talk to my manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't miss. I don't miss my times working in corporate America. Yeah. But I did learn some good stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, yes, let's move along from there before anybody gets any ideas. <laughs> I am just waiting for the to the point that where I do get temporarily suspended. Oh. Pen, might, pending investigation. Pending, pending investigation. Pending investigation. <laughs> it might happen. Pe the pending investigation is the is the is the so and so was arrested for murder, allegedly. allegedly. Like that's <laughs> that's what that is. It's alleged, is what that means. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, nice. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> um, uh, you got anything left? When I was um, when I was digging around through the uh, the all the CK uh, studios stuff um i did find this um this photo caleb do you remember uh remember these oh, guys That's oh yeah some emperor's yeah. shoulder right there yeah yep. so i think this uh i think you took this to uh golden demon in 2013 in memphis no these remember. these went to to uk these oh these were went at, to UK. my yeah, mistake sorry these went to uk Right. What so did you have? Funny, funny story about these, like a side story was um, they also went to Las Vegas and they ended up winning best airbrushed model because at the time we were so well known for our airbrushing. Right. None of it was airbrushed. <laughs> um, so they ended up having to change the award over to a Titan I, I had painted Um for best airbrush because these had no airbrushing on them at all. <laughs> right. So, nice. Anyways. But uh, what was it? What was, what did you take to Memphis Golden Demon then? 2013. Memphis Golden Demon. Um, it was the last one in us in the US until uh, Adepticon two years ago. I want to say that was the jump captain, uh, the, you remember Forge World did a jump captain with the Thunder Hammer? Okay. Yep. I think that, that one? either that one was Memphis or the or the Krieg Commissar. Okay. Ready up. Um, I can't remember. Could've, it's been a while ago. Could have sworn you had a had a squad. But anyway, I think um so Caleb and I actually met each other um in 2010 uh at uh, Games Day in Baltimore, not Baltimore, in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Yep. Where um, uh, we both we were both staying in the room of our mutual friend Bryce Coconut. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that was that was my first Golden Demon. Um, that was my first going to events like that. Bryce said I just got into the hobby. I I got into the hobby late 2009. Um, he talked me into going to Golden Demon. I entered a squad and all that stuff, and um, I met all of you guys at dinner at Giordano's. And right. it was so amazing. I didn't know what it was at the time. I was so new to the hobby. I had no idea. But I, we were sitting at the table with what? What would you say? About 130 golden demons, like 12 <laughs> slayer swords. And we're yep. sitting there eating. And all of a sudden, you guys all start opening up your boxes with your models and start passing around the models. And I mean, you're, you're getting to see the models before they're entered. And I, I think the slayer sword was at the table that day. Um, gold in like six different categories. We're all getting passed around the table. That was so cool. That was such a, a, a neat, unique experience. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't think many people get that opportunity, especially a brand new person just in the hobby. It was, it was just, it was kind of surreal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I do remember that. I think I was, was that the last time uh, Chad Patrick might have been at a show. But yeah, but no, um, awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, I do. Um, I do remember hanging out uh, in uh, Aaron Lovejoy's hotel room at uh, in Memphis, and uh, checking out a whole bunch of different entries there as well. But uh, super cool. But yeah, I definitely love these pieces. So uh, you said this was uh, Golden Demon in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yep. that took sil silver. I think so. Silver uh, yeah. Squad. I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, but uh, absolutely super cool. Um, I just wanted to throw there, throw that in there, and uh, 
one of the things I really love about this piece is the banner. And normally when you see banners, particularly Space Marine banners, there's a lot of garish colors. Uh, or there's a lot of colors going on. Um, I'm assuming this is made out of human skin, so. <laughs> nice. Well, I think this is the sort of just before they turned. <laughs> so when they were still. Is it though? They were just fancy. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, they were just fancy. <laughs> um, the, the, the inspiration behind this banner actually is um, I went over and visited um, Roman and Rafa in Augsburg. And they took me to like where the old ruling palace was. And in it, they had these great big giant murals that were on the wall, all painted. I don't know if they're murals, frescoes, whatever they're called. I'm not real great on what all that was, but um, it was all in this kind of light sandstone look. And what it was was the whole storyline about the the merchant family that had that had established Augsburg. And so everything in it, all the image and stuff. Um, was symbolism of the family. So I came home and I took a bunch of pictures of it. And then if you ever get a chance to really zoom in on the banner, it's, it's a whole story about the emperor's children. And it starts at the top of the banner. It starts talking about how they're, they were established, um, you know, and they're the third legion and they're, they're after perfection and all that stuff. Um, but they kind of feel like they're the dogs of, of the Imperium. And at the very top, there's a, there's a, uh, an Aquila watching, which represents the emperor. And of course it's got its blind eye now and it's starting to kind of corrode. And then at the bottom where, where they're kind of holding the Imperium up, the dogs are holding up the Imperium or maybe holding up the crusades because they're carrying it on their backs. Right. Um, the dogs start to corrupt. And if you look at the legs of the dogs, they start to kind of turn into tentacles. And then at the very bottom in the center of the banner is, is a big open sun and in the middle on one side is kind of, it's darkened and there's a figure on the, the one side that's all dark and there's a figure on the other side that's light. And that's uh, like representing the, the corruption of Horus and how the Emperor's children are starting to lead into that corruption. It was really fun. Excuse me. It was a super fun project. Um, one of the first banners I got to do that like really, I put a lot of thought into and got to tell a story with it. So down cool. the bottom, down the bottom, there's two little symbols: one for blackjack, one for hookers. And it's like at yeah. the bottom. That's when, that's when things really get wild. <laughs> I think there is an Easter egg hidden in that one somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, there's some. There's yeah. <laughs> those of you that are in the know, you guys know what a lot of artists like to hide in their pieces. So yeah, there's some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Called an Easter egg. Nice. They, I mean, they look great. Like the purple slayers. I think it's funny. I think you should have just told them, "Yep, it's all airbrushed." I did. I did the entire model with just airbrush. All the the <laughs> banner. I did it all with an airbrush. The eyes are with an airbrush. And people will be like, "He's the best airbrush artist in the world." You're like, "Yep, right. did all with an airbrush." Yeah, did the whole thing. All those fine lines. Yep, all of it. I just use it. This is airbrush. This is the airbrush only category, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's really awesome. Um. Uh, Fantastic. And the last uh, last photo that I've got here is, uh, so all these years you've uh, been out there presenting a lot of classes, teaching a lot of people. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, like a week or two before Adepticon, you went to uh, Herrick Games and Hobbies and uh, were a student. Yeah. Uh, so who, who taught that class? That was... Uh, Nicholas uh, and NMR NMR painting Nicholas Morton. I'm gonna hack. It's yeah. NRM. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. A, a Danish painter. Yep. So uh, here is the the piece that you worked on. Yeah. So much fun. Nice. So what was the uh, what was the the focus of the class? So the focus of the class was um, kind of developing that stippling technique that. Nicholas uses. Um, it was really cool. I'd used the stippling technique before, um, not to the extent that he uses it. So um, that part of it wasn't super new. But what I personally got out of it was the light transition. And again, being being so airbrush oriented, um, a lot of my painting is done with kind of a light style of 
zenithal um, just because airbrushing kind of lends itself to that. And going in and painting this piece in the way that that we want to paint it. And I really, it was really important to me that if when I went into this class that I, I was a student and I really took the time to, I've had so many students that want to, I, I don't, I don't want to speak poorly of it, but there's a lot of students that go in there and don't necessarily pay attention. They kind of know what's going on. They'll paint past what the instructor's doing. And I really try to just follow the class and sat every time he talked, I put everything down to concentrate and I got a lot out of it because of it, but I really concentrated on painting the exact style that he wanted in the class. And it really helped me change kind of my, my grasp and aspect of light. And I'm, I think I'm going to change up my painting a little bit and try some more of this really fo forced focus. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you look on the bust, you see the huge shadows on the tops of the shoulders. Yep. Um, that is definitely not a zenithal style light. Normally the tops of your shoulders would catch light, the tops of the pectorials. Um, but with this model and the way that we position the light, it's almost like the light is coming from the viewer. And it allowed me to really play and shift focus and still create smoothness and realism with a super not realistic light source. So I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, and it allowed me to, I think it's going to allow me to expand my painting a little bit and maybe do things that I can shift the focus and shift the atmosphere of the model more. So it was fun. It was super fun. If you guys ever get a chance to do a class with Nicholas, it was a fantastic class. He is a really good instructor. And I mean, English is not his primary language and it was just phenomenal class. Cool. Awesome. It looks great. Like the, the colors are super cool. Like the, the skin looks so real and vibrant. And like I said, I, I understand what you're saying looking at it now. Cause I was like, it took me a minute. My brain was like, why does the lighting look weird? And then I was like, Oh, I see. It's, it's like, it's like the light is coming this way in front of him. Um, but like the, yep. the metal is super cool. Like on the helmet, like the, the metal look that you created, like, um, but I appreciate the fact that you went into it, like you said, as a student and took, took just, I'm going to listen to his instructions. Um, because you're learning a new skill, you know, I supposed to, I can, I can imagine Kelly being like, uh, actually how I do airbrushing. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like there are so many people that have that mentality and it's like taking your ego out of it to learn a new skill. I think it's, I think that's a, that's a really great, you know, ability to be able to do that and kind of step outside yourself and go, I'm just going to, I'm a student. I'm just going to learn this thing. Uh, I think that so many more people would get so much more out of the lessons that they kind of come across if they were able to do that. Yeah. It was really cute to see it too. Cause Caleb walked into that classroom and took the seat right at the front of the room, like got there in time to be, get the prime seat. He won. He, it was like when you take your, your six-year-old to first grade on the first day kind of thing. It was really cute to watch. He literally walked in and just claimed that first seat right in front of the instructor. <laughs> and I am here to be a student. Period. Damn, Killer, Killer awesome. put an apple on put an apple on his desk. Oh my god, it was <laughs> so awesome. Dan, Dan was with me and he's like, Really? We gotta sit the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> he did too. He literally asked you that. Really? He yeah. like, I'm not I'm not sitting in the back class with the bad kids. Like yeah. <laughs> I can just and, imagine. And Remy, I gotta Remy ace this class. The, the Remy man, the, the scars are sculpted in, um, and then a lot of the little ticks and nicks and all that stuff uh, we did with a brush to go in and kind of exaggerate them and stuff like that. But yeah, those big heavy scars are all molded in. Right, awesome. I'm uh, I'm kind of excited as well. It's been a, a long time since I have taken a class um, from anyone, uh, mainly because I'm pretty happy with my sort of painting style. Uh, and it brings me comfort and joy to paint lots of toy soldiers. But um, at Nova, I've signed up for a class with uh, Valbjorn uh, to learn some like micro sculpting. Oh, how cool. Uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, pretty amazing. It's a four hour class. It starts at like 8.30 in the morning. So I'm going to be <laughs> need to get a, a coffee beforehand. But I don't like um, that. Yeah. But uh, I figure that like taking the morning class is going to be much better than taking the evening class when I'm going to want to be like having a burger and drinking a beer. What so, day is that? Uh, it's Thursday, Thursday morning. Maybe we'll do our morning walk and grab coffee that morning. 
it'll be okay. super early, but we'll beat the traffic that way. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, at um, Nova last year, uh, Kat and I walked from the uh, hotel, like two miles down to the White House, and then back, grab some uh, coffee and uh, Danishes. Mm -hmm. Real Danishes. Do we, have, do we have Danishes or do we have uh, muffins? I can't remember. I think we have both. I, I got multiple okay. things. That's true. Good coffee. <laughs> it That's, was good. That's how I always try to do breakfast, Hobbit style. I never get one breakfast. I get at least mm -hmm. two breakfasts. At least two breakfasts. Eleven Z yeah. in the pocket. <laughs> but uh, I am uh, I am pretty excited about it. But um, I'm glad that you pointed out the that going into a class where you, you think you know a bit about what's going on um, to basically just take a step back and just listen, absorb. So. I'll uh, need to adjust my approach, but yeah, looking forward to that. I think awesome. also um, from years of teaching, Caleb's been on the receiving end of the stump the teacher student. There's, okay. there's typically one in the classroom whose like outward expression in the room is just very um, stump the teacher. Like I got to challenge the teacher on everything he's teaching because I, I got to explain that I already know it. And right. that can make it very viscerally uncomfortable for everybody else in the room. The instructor can get past it, honestly, but it makes it viscerally uncomfortable to learn around. So the last thing you want to do is go into it as a student, a teacher student, especially, and go in and play stump the teacher and show, try and show them up the whole time. It's so difficult to have that student in the classroom. Like, it really is. Well, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I think Caleb probably just because he is an instructor probably was a dream student <laughs> to have in the room. Like I, I try, yeah. I try I'm here to, to learn, that, but I'm here to learn. Yeah. Yeah. But no, um, as uh, Mike uh, says there, it's so obnoxious in a paid class for grownups. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no, no need for that at all. Um, and I will definitely be keeping that uh, in mind that I paid for that class and I will learn as much. <laughs> From it. <laughs> How cool! You're getting to take a sculpting class. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. It's a physical sculpt. You're not talking digital sculpting. You're talking um, physical, physical, back to old school clay. Different putties oh. and that sort of thing. I'm, I think we're gonna yeah. be learning green stuff, of... milliput, gray stuff. Oh, I am so jelly. Oh, that yeah. sounds like so much fun. That's yeah, the one should... thing I really want to study. Oh my goodness! Good for you. Good for you. Cool. I mean, it's gonna be tough. <laughs> Scott says, you want to hear uncomfortable? Ben Comets expressed a fraction is two-fourths. What a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody knows it's two quarters. Um, <laughs> what? No, it's one half. <laughs> it's two quarters. Everybody knows it's two quarters. I, I guess it must be. There we go. Maybe it was, was it, so I'll be talking about two, two quarters. Anyway, anyway. anyway um, fantastic. So um, I think... Uh, We've covered a, a whole bunch of stuff uh, about C CK Studios. We've talked about the, the original ideas behind um, that and what you've been able to do over the years uh, with that, uh, which I think give our viewers, listeners, a, an idea of what else you guys will be bringing to the Army Painter um, hobby programs, hobby systems, hobby approach at um, events and conventions and so on. Um, which I think is really cool. I'm excited to see how that uh, pans out. And of course, uh, I think the first time that Jake and I are going to get to experience is when we're hanging out with you guys at San Diego Comic Con. Yes. Um, live, you guys, but... if you get a chance, if you're in San Diego and can get over to San Diego Comic Con, we collectively, the four of us, so this is yep. all, all of these wonderful lovely humans and um, we are your collective hobby experience if you come take classes so come hang out with us we're going to do a paint and take at san diego comic con you get the the four of us in a room together it's going to be like shredding humor the whole time it's going to be so good it will be so I good and then i'm trying to convince be. them to take a road trip with me from there to like gen con but we're only part way into this conversation i'll keep you all updated yeah <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna live. We're gonna live stream the whole trip. We're gonna oh, live stream the whole way. trip. 
No way. Oh my god. Caleb will, Caleb will be painting in the front seat while we're like going on the road. <laughs> I'll, I'll meet you guys there. I'm flying. <laughs> I, no, I can just imagine it. It'd be why is that tire flat? Well, Caleb's used the only air from it for his airbrush. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be all good. Good news though, Dave. Dave knocked out a four thousand point Space Marine army in the uh, two days and three days it took us to drive from California to Indianapolis, though. So, yeah, there's an incentive for you there. Off. We could do that. Oh my gosh, we could have a competition. It could be a driving competition to see who gets a certain thing accomplished in the drive to Indianapolis. If you do that, Caleb will join us. He can't turn down. Oh, a can't turn down a competition. Okay, challenge. <laughs> challenge. We'll, we'll work it out. We're we'll stretching work it. Out. <laughs> awesome. Too fun. Oh my um, god. Jess, Jess Hunt says sixteen thirty tooths. No. Uh, <laughs> Matt Bowles says two quarters is four bits. <laughs> oh god. Be all good. Um, fantastic. So. The next part of the show uh, is where we jump in and we take a look at photos from the uh, Build, Paint, Play community. Uh, it's our Facebook page. Um, everybody is welcome to jump on Facebook, uh, find that page, click join. Uh, somebody will let you in. Uh, and then you can start uh, spreading the hobby love there. Uh, is everybody ready to take a look? At some really cool, uh, and again, it's it's a huge swath of minis that we're going to be uh, that we're going to get to see. Oh, anybody's anybody's in the chat? If you guys are watching or listening, or whatever, please make sure you guys like and comment on the YouTube thing. It like it helps the algorithm do its thing or whatever. So, yep. <laughs> so please, uh, please, yes, like, share, subscribe, yep. poke uh, poke the algorithm, do all the things. But uh, first up. Uh, Adam Weller uh, has painted this insane Nurgle dude. Nurgle I do green. like green. Yeah. I, I really like the green. I really like the green at the very top near his horn and on the shoulder pads. Like, I like that, the way he toned that green. I like that re real rich, deep green that's, like, that's super like, saturated as he fades it out. I'd say that looks great. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. Ex excellent use of light and creating focus um using the horn the eye the chest the arm stuff like that you've got a lot of good light vectors that brings your eye right to the center of the model's face especially with that rich green you're talking about just brings it it through really well um yep. really well put together i wonder if i wonder if adam painted this area here yeah I wonder if Adam painted the like the irises and the corneas and the pupils, or if they were like sculpted and then he painted them. Um, no, I think they. I think they're all painted. I think uh, everything there is um, anything that, that looks has looks like it has that depth there. I think that's been painted in. It looks great. I I also like that he like I do a lot of effects like painting, so like I like that he he must have used like a gloss or like a gloss oh, wash. Yeah. Cause like they look wet, like the let the eyes look reflective and wet, like they should. Yeah, I think sometimes that might take like uh, four or five or six layers of uh, of a gloss to get that wonderful uh, crazy depth. Yeah, and as John said, that drooping eye is wonderfully disturbing. It is that <laughs> drooping eye does kind of get to like ooh. <laughs> and it uh, just said brother conjunctivitis. <laughs> so uh, beautiful work there, Adam. Uh, looks great. Uh, Adam has also uh, painted up this uh, squig herd for his, uh, well, I think he's building some orcs. I know we saw uh, an orc war boss last week. He might just be having some fun with uh, with painting some orcs, but um, that wonderful, uh, lovely red skin. Yeah, it's so weird seeing an orc not green, but I love it. Like, he looks great. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I like that between the two pictures is really showing his ability to adjust styles for the model. Um, yeah. If you were to see these models side by side, I don't think you'd think the same artist painted them, but um, yeah. yeah one Cause this, this one is so clean. Wow. Yeah, just looking at the, even just looking at the textures on the, the skin. Exactly. And the, and the, the weapon, the weapons. Yep. Ooh, that's pretty. I like the, I love I like the pop, that matte effect. I like the pop of color on the stitches on his pants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But no, fantastic work, Adam. Yeah, those are great. Super cool. <laughs> As Matt says, get them scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> that wonderful squig. Uh, awesome. Uh, next up, we've got Cal Vanoni. Uh, Cal's in the chat at the moment. So thanks for posting these, Cal. I think uh, we've got another one from Cal as well, but there's a few more that he posted uh, today that I didn't quite get a chance to grab. Uh, what are these? What are these from? Uh, I think I'm not sure if these are other world miniatures or not, uh, but Cal will be able to let us know. Um, but yeah, I'm just creepy. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the skeleton awesome. dudes. The skeleton dudes on the left have a very like Gerald Brom Dark Sun vibe to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. They're super cool. It's nice and dark and kind yeah. of eerie. Yeah. I like them a lot. The wraiths are cool too, but the skeleton warriors are really speaking to me. I like those guys. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Cal says uh, other world miniatures. Okay. Other world, yeah. Nice. Super, super crusty. Super, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I like it. There's that kind of, yeah, that, that wasted Brom feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice work, Cal. They look good. And uh, some kobolds Ooh. as well. Grab this one. Who uh, doesn't love little dragon imps? Like, they're the best. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Um, but yeah, these ones look great. I think um, I don't think I've ever really thought about kobolds as dragon imps, which is kind of wild. Well, they're, but... they're supposed to be they're related to dragons, like yeah. Well, I don't know why, I, but I never I never got that. I never picked that up. So um, Re really nice color palette on them too. Yeah, yeah. But no, uh... <laughs> I remember <laughs> as a kid as a kid running D and D games. If we're playing a first level game and you guys are all my first level party and I'm the DM. I would always throw kobolds at you because, like, they're like the lowest challenge rating. And, like, other than fighting, like, oh, you're attacked by a bear. Like, you're you, like, kobolds are the lowest challenge rating. So you always run into tons of them. But also, I hated painting kobolds because I'm like, I need to paint like 700 of them, and they're all just going <laughs> to die in the first two turns. Like, <laughs> should have uh, should have given me a yell. <laughs> yeah. Hey Dave, I need 700 kobolds. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, great work, Cal. Uh, nice one. Those are great. Uh, next up, Cliff Edders has uh, finished ah. off the Man Havoc squad for uh, his Iron Warriors Horus Heresy army. So, Iron uh, within. Iron without. There we go. Yeah, these yeah. are great. So, uh, yeah, they are nice and clean. I don't know what the black is. It almost looks like the... Um... the was it the... It's the new GW black, not... not is it uh, Corvus black? Possibly. Because it has like a little bit of like gray in it. Yeah, it's got a bit of blue in it. I really like that that kind of blue take on on the yeah. Iron Hands. It's just, yeah. yeah. Awesome. But yeah, it is uh, nice. Looking good there. Uh, and I'm loving the uh, the orange glow as well, Cliff. Looking the, really good. the green glow? Green glow. Uh, the pops of the green glow. Is, is my colors different? Yeah, I was like, "What's wrong with my computer?" What is he talking about? <laughs> no, it's it's my um, it's my uh, language processing unit is has been out oh, a little bit tonight, so I apologize. <laughs> my language processing unit. Oh, I'm stealing green. that. Green, green glow, green. Say the word. This, green. It, it it may just be me, but this is like a Seahawks squad to me for some reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's because of that. It's because of that bluish, that bluish black with the green. Yeah, yeah, I am loving it. That's it really, that's one of my favorite uniforms in football. <laughs> I love the color combo on it. I, this yeah. has got Seahawks feel to me. It, love it's it. Definitely a, a different color. Mm -hmm. take on my, I like it. Not a lot of the rust and grime. It's kind of a a different color take. Yeah. Oh, Matt says it's it's coal black from Pro Acryl. Okay. Mm. I mean that that would make sense if that's what oh, Cliff was it, using. Or is it a bit more coal black from? Um, P three, which P3. has oh maybe I don't know. Again, like like I don't. Cliff's not on. I would ask Cliff if he was here, but yeah. Okay, that's enough talking about his orange glows. Uh, <laughs> uh, Clive, uh, paint up a uh, a wonderful necromancer here or a lich, I think. Um, but yeah, very nice. Cool. I think this is um. Where do you know where this model's from, Jake? Uh, this one I don't know. I, I thought it was. Uh, it's not it's not reaper it looks like a reaper menu but it's not i don't know what this is from this might be from a board game uh could be could be might what's be that what's that game that blair loves 
Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, Shadow and Brimstone. It could be like a Shadow and Brimstone mini. Oh, it could be. I don't know. But I think um, Clive's definitely having uh, having a lot of fun sort of getting back into painting and uh, enjoying these. But I think that yeah. uh, sort of pinkish purple for the robes is looking quite cool. Yeah, I, I really, that's what I was noticing. The robes look really good. You've really seen the texture and the shape of them. Um, great use of some of the speed paint style painting. I would assume it, it looks it looks really good. The, I I, the speed paints, the speed paints are such a crazy thing. Like, I, I feel like the kids in the in the Wi Fi commercial you see all the time, where they're like, "Oh, these kids nowadays, they don't know what it's like to have lag on your high speed internet." And it's like <laughs> growing up painting, where my first models were Ralph Partha metal paints, Ralph Partha metals, and I was painting them with, I was painting them with testers, oil based mom enamel. paint yep. yeah like yeah now paints and you know we'd be in a basement with no uh any no sort of like you know fumigation or anything or, or anything and you'd be down there my mom would be like what are you guys doing down there and then she'd come downstairs and like open all the windows and now it's like oh you can just buy contrast paints and you're like what does that do you like it does three steps for you here you're welcome like it's crazy yeah back in my day we used to have to mix yeah. our shadow paints <laughs> and we only had white primer and we liked it <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so, well done, Clive. Uh, next up, we've got Jason Kohler. Uh, I like this elemental a lot. That's yeah. cool. It's a cool, cool stone elemental there. You know, that looks like it'd be fun to paint. Yep. Like, really super quick and easy, but you get big effects because of all of that texture going on. That yeah. is so rad. I Does thought that, that was fun. Steam? Is that one of the Steam Forged models? Uh oh, from, from the from the, the Epic Encounters set. So Epic Encounters, yeah, it kind of looks like one of those. That is, yeah, I love all the facets on that model, and he did such a good job picking them out. Yeah, all the different color striations in there and stuff. Excellent. No, very cool. He did, like he did like multiple washes, like the slate that's on his head. You can tell that he did multiple different colors and let it pool, so you can get that effect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can see the browns and the greens. Browns, greens. Excellent right. job. Super and I like greens. also that the gemstones on the back, if those are gemstones, yep. are not overplayed. Like they did not overplay that at all. That's so good. I love it. Good yep. job. Nice work, Jason. Excellent. Uh, Jeff has been uh, doing some more work on his wolf spear. We'll get to see uh, his completed army in. Two weeks. That's right. Uh, the finale episode for A Tale of Four Warlords. Um, but I got to fight against this guy on uh, the weekend. Um, nice. I, think, I don't think I shot this one. He was hiding. <laughs> in a, he was hiding in a building the whole game. That's what I'm. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Jeff also uh, got his shipment of um, Dragon Forge resin oh. bases. All right for the rest of his army. Yep. The uh, entire army on tactical rocks. But, uh, he does yeah. love a good tactical rock. He does. Does indeed. But looking good. Uh, next up, John. So John Sani mentioned he's painted nearly 24 more German uh, mercenaries due to speed paints. Oh. They're a game changer for textured historical models. So here are some of them here. I've, I've always loved John's style of painting ever since i saw his first tanks at nova i was like man he's just yep. got a really nice aspect to his style of painting and I, I just always enjoy looking at it he has recovered so much like so much this has been such a climb for john to come back into the hobby and look at him i mean the man was brilliant before everything happened and look at the look where he's come back to i'm so happy for him it's yeah. such an amazing, his personal story is such an amazing story. And his work is almost up to where it was years ago. It's amazing. Good for yeah. him. His his use of colors and his choices are so smart too. So good. Like it's, it's not just, it's not just the effects and the ability. It's the, it's the choices that went into it. Yeah. yeah. He's such an amazingly mind, well-minded um, artist. You know, I'd like to, use this as a great example we in in the chat earlier we had a uh, a question about how would you use the fanatic paints and the speed paints and this right here is a great example of 
using the different paint lines together. Um, if, if you look, especially with like the, the kind of the pinkish, I don't know what color you would call that for like the plumes and stuff. You can see he's got a lot of the, the speed paints in the back and yep. he's using those to create the bases shape. You know, you're using them to, to feather, to, to highlight. There's a lot of uses for speed paints. I mean, we could talk for hours on that, but then if you notice over in the corner of his list of colors and palettes, you can see a couple of standard opaque paints. He's got a couple of reapers there and mm -hmm. that's really where, when you're introducing a line and what army painter is after with the speed paint line, with the air paint line, um, with the fanatic line, fanatic range, um, is they all accent each other. They're not necessarily, you don't have to use either one of them. You can use any of them by themselves. They're, they, they're all standalone paints, but where the magic is is when they're all used together. When you're when you're using your opaque paints and you're using your your um, speed paints, your more transparent paints as glazes or to create shape, to create value, and that's what what John has done here. You can really see the values that he's been able to sketch in, um, probably with some quick highlights, maybe with an airbrush, maybe with a dry brush, um, but then coming in, creating the shape, creating the value with the speed paints, then coming in and detailing with nice opaque paints, getting that opaque layers on to, to create value, create shape, create texture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, fa fantastic work. I love that he, he's got all his paints in the background. It gives you an idea of how his, his process is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful palette choice too. The colors are just stunning. And I, I'm just wishing I could see the rest of that freehand on that banner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, John, John, I, I feel like I feel like free. that's the worst tease ever. Like yeah. I want John to send me a picture of the. <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to get around that. Can we see the other side of that? We that is so good, John. Oh, I'm so glad right. to see John back in the game. Like. Yeah. Oh, what I a gift! I, I'm guessing those um the uh the plumes uh on all the hats there are uh the familiar pink, speed paint. But uh, yeah, this is a um, a unit of um, oh, it says it's an X for Burgundy. Oh, well, that that murder scene, I that is one of my favorite colors of speed paint. I absolutely love that color. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Excellent. Uh, so this is a unit of uh, it's like a it's sort of a command um, unit generals there. And uh, last week we saw um, he was halfway through painting uh, the general's coach. Uh, he's finished it off and he took a shot um, with the uh, the top removed so that we could see the, the models inside. Oh, so good. I wanted to show that one um, specifically. I want to see the horses up close. Uh, we'll have to have it check it out on the uh, the Facebook group. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll go check it out. I'm. I definitely so want to see there. the horses. Those look so good. Oh, so cool. I like it a lot. Good job, John. You know, excellent work, John. Very cool. Uh, next up, uh, Josh Sawyer. Um, huh? Is this Bushido? This is Bushido. Uh, yep. So he had a demo game at Adepticon, uh, and I think Sky uh, Herrick convinced him to pick some up. And wow. so we're just like two weeks out from after Adepticon, but this was last week. He painted up a Bushido uh, warband, and uh, I believe he also uh, printed and painted the terrain, uh, so we could play a game. So we played so it on last awesome. weekend, with, uh, Bushido. So he's super excited about it. Obviously, uh, there he is. Yeah, my twenty-four hour turnaround. <laughs> There's a, yeah, he was just out of Adepticon. He just he yeah. just did this. Just got it. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, machine, Josh. Yep. Those are so awesome. They, they look Crazy. fantastic. I think the um, I, Japanese the sort of feudal Japanese architecture with that, the, like the bright red painted wood, is mm -hmm. uh, is always striking. It looks great. He's um the actual composition of this. Such a photographer too. Look at the composition yeah. of the entire photo. Is absolutely stunning. Like, yeah, perfect. I am in love with terrain and want to get into painting terrain. 
and I'm so afraid of it because it takes up so much room. And I just want to paint terrain because it looks like fun to paint. Oh, I'm glad yeah. that you said that. I have so much terrain to paint. There you <laughs> go. Problem solved. I there will paint your terrain. Oh my gosh, it looks like so much fun to me. Awesome. I need, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'll be your huckleberry. <laughs> nice. I love I love well painted terrain. Dave and I've had this conversation numerous times. I'm always like, it looks great. I have so many minis to paint. I don't have time to paint terrain. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, awesome. Uh, Brett Abbott says, uh, they're great. I need to dry Bushido. Uh, definitely, uh, Brett. Uh, Josh Sawyer says, uh, photography making up for my painting. I don't know if that, I don't know if I'd agree, but. <laughs> and it, like complimenting your painting is uh, the way to go there. But no, great work, Josh. Nice one. Um, oh, sorry. This um, this says Josh Troy. Josh, uh, Josh yeah. I I need to. I forgot to uh, change the the name. This is uh, Kelly Rowe. Uh, so Kelly's been painting up a bunch of uh, MCP stuff recently, uh, but is taking a step back to um, painting some fantasy miniatures. Uh, so this model, is, I like. I like everything about this model. That, that's like one machine, right? Or uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's uh I think it's just a uh, he printed up oh wow he said in the post who it's from, I forget. Let's have a look. Um but yeah, I, I this is it's not war machine. I think he just printed this up. It looks to me like like I would guess that this is a elf warlock. Um, but like the color is great. He's got the triangle going on with like the base and then the staff and then like the spell effect. Um I'm a sucker for good greens. So this has two different shades. It's got like the crazy electric green of the spell effects and then like the nice rich green of the cape. Um, and then the, the great transition between like the green and then the purple of like the bodice and the boots and the wraps. So like you've got the whole, the color palette working. It, it just, it's great. And then the, uh, was it the foam? He's at the foam cave in the background. It's like, yeah, the, like the, the atmosphere background. on this to boot is so yeah. good. There we go. I, Kelly's in the in the chat. Uh, my apologies, Kelly, for uh, having to say Josh Sawyer, but it's Kelly Rowe. Uh, Kelly says uh, Artisan Guild is the mm, source for the. Nice. The old, I, I, old I really like. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Go for it, Caleb. <laughs> I was going to say, I really like the glow effect. Um, what we see a lot of is people go a little overboard with glow effects. Um, glow effects are really important on understanding the lighting of the model. And, and what the values are going to be. So nice subdued glow effects because it's obviously a brighter, um, the, the models out in the sun, out in the light where glow effects wouldn't be super powerful. But they're just yeah. really nice hints of it. So it really just complements the model along with all the color choice and everything that Jake was talking about. So fantastic. Absolutely. Super cool. It's, I also really like that mini too. Like I just really like that. Yeah, like a, exactly. there's a lot of things, a lot of things there I just, I just like. Yeah. I love the motion on this mini. I love that the mini itself can be on such a small base yet tell an explosive story. This is such a good like choice of colors for this particular model, but I really love your use of green because it takes me in it and then it shoots me out of it. Like it yeah. really takes me through the whole model. The green does really well played Kelly. I love it. This is Super great. Cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, next up, uh, oops, sorry, I clicked something. Oh, there we go. Uh, Christian posted uh, sort of his uh, Sons of Horus uh, on Terra, marching from the uh, spaceport to the gates of Terra, uh, gates of the Emperor's Palace. Christian's like Blanchitsu esque stuff is some, yeah. it's some of my favorite stuff. Yeah. There, there's so many little details in here. And for models that have like that messy, dark kind of gothic look, there's so many little beautifully detailed high points. Like the the Terminator captain to the left, his belt buckle or his the belt shield, he has it checkered on one half and then he has the chaos on the other half. Mm -hmm. And then he's got like the Imperial fist helmet on the base and there's like squad markings on it. Like it's just there's so many little Easter eggs hidden in all of his stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you really see again that that. Difference in transitions with glow effects, right? Uh, the model before was a very light, airy, bright, yep. and the glow effects weren't overdone. This is a really grim, dark, heavy, 
and you can see the glow effects are really solid like the way it's bouncing off the skulls uh, on the floor the way it's bouncing off of his trophy racks um really well done and understanding the atmosphere you're after and telling that story so fantastic yeah, yeah. absolutely so also, also, I have a little bit of retro vibe. The the missile launchers in the back on the right behind the guy with the transverse mohawk. The old yeah. school, like, Rogue Trader shoulder-mounted ones with the magazine of rockets. I love that. Yeah. The shock uh, the shock launches. Oh, it's the best. It was so stupid. I love it. I love, <laughs> like, the, the original Rogue Trader boxes, space marines, that's the rocket launchers they had. Yeah. Looks great. Excellent work. Awesome. Uh I wanted to sort of put this uh, in here. So uh, Luis has been working on um, his tour Garadon uh, and a few things happened during the process that he wasn't happy with. So he's decided to pop it in some uh, stripper and strip the paint back and start again. I know there are some people who are like, no, just power through. And other people are like, no, just buy another model or whatever it happens to be. But there are so many different ways that we can approach our hobby. And the way that works for us is the way that we should do it. And this is what's working for Louise. So uh, he's not going to give up on this. I know he's going to come back and uh, make sure that his his model is the best it can be. We've seen uh, some awesome work from him already. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that as a yeah, as a it, of, it's really show. cool, right? Because it's it's a it's a it's a peek behind the curtain. And mm -hmm. to your point, like like Luis is such a great painter, and you're like. It's like a hey here see like we all we all trip like it's all good like this is what I do when I make a mistake kind of thing. Yep, yep, exactly. So very cool. Um, oh, JP's going to uh, head off, so he will uh, be sending some more photos from his paint and takes. So uh, nice. Those it'd be great to see those on the uh, Build Paint Play community page. Uh, so. Thanks for posting that, Luis. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing the resurrected Torgadon, Torgaradon, Torgaradon. Sorry, yep. the uh, Imperial Fist character. Uh, and here we go, Matt Bowles. Uh, we said he was. We were going to show his uh, kill rig. So uh, there it such, is. Such such a wacky model. It's like a giant like squig rhino with a with a plate on its back where you can put dudes pulling like a wagon that has like guys with guns and like chainsaws on the side like it's so crazy <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it's it's this should like this needs a comic book written about it right? yeah it would it'd be absolutely crazy it's just it's uh, proper it's just proper orky proper orky yeah there's so oh. so much going on a um, lot of conversions yeah oh no this is the this is the actual model this is the base model oh. the kill that's the base model. Oh wow! What yeah. a crazy does it, model. Does it come with those like? Does it come with those like uh, those cables? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's crazy. <laughs> what a crazy model. I've never seen that model before. Yep. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think because it's such an involved kit, very few people have tackled it. Um, so it's. I mean, it's is big. That, is that a landing pad or something at the front? I think you can put orcs up there because I think it can carry orcs. Yep. Oh wow. Transport. Nice. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Matt says, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the cables come with it, but they're broken several times. Yeah, I can see that. So what is this? What is the model again? Uh, it's called uh, the a kill rig. Um, kill rig. Yeah, it's oh, the beast right. the kill rig. So um, and it can, yep. It says it can carry troops, but yeah. So underneath that sort of uh panel at the front there's an enormous sort of squigasaur mm -hmm. uh, squigasaurus kind of thing um which is just absolutely crazy he has like a giant like metal like head plate with a rhinoceros horn on it and then i like that he has like armor plates like nailed onto him so yep. he's a little more durable <laughs> I like yep. this idea from Cal. It's a stage area for the orc band. Oh, that might nice. actually make like a pretty epic looking array right there. Oh, with right the out of Mad Max. On it. <laughs> right out of Mad Max. You can have the you can have the, the golf rocker do warrior like uh-huh. That'd be so cool. Absolutely awesome. Great work there, Matt. Yeah, these are great. Great to see it uh, great finished. Uh next up, uh Reese. So our friend Reese from uh, my mini factory. Uh 
painted up this awesome uh, wow. walrus uh, shaman. That is such a cool model. Yeah, I love the really textures. Is. Wow. Yeah. So really many, there's, well there's so much going on in this model. There's so <laughs> much going on, but he didn't overpaint it. Like you could have so yeah. easily overpainted this. One bright color too much would have thrown this whole model off because there's so much going on. Whoever did this had such a good idea to go as muted with those colors as possible. Because where it pops like that leg and the hair actually makes sense. It's not overwhelming. The little bit of yellow on the chest, not overwhelming, ties me in with the, the stuff up on the weapon. This is so such a good start on this. Yeah, I like this. his like ogre style gut plate with like the skull and all the teeth That's and cool. it's like all roped together. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like I imagine him being like, I sunk a pirate ship and I took this. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of wearing it around your neck. Yeah. It just looks cool. So I kept it. You're like, Oh, cool. <laughs> but uh, it looks great. Reese. Yeah, like nice that. work. Very cool. Uh, next up, we have uh, so Stephen Ryder. Uh, we're gonna close shots from Stephen. Um, Kat, you'll love this. Uh, so Stephen uh, has recently taken to um, when he's working with his wet palette, uh, he'll put his uh, put out the paints sort of strategically. But once he's finished, or once he's sort of filled the the palette paper, he'll uh, go in and start moving the paint around and that sort of thing uh to create a uh a landscape like a, yeah like a bob ross like creation of happy little trees and i yeah. absolutely love that so much oh my gosh oh i so, it's ridiculous how many times i've actually collected people's palettes because they're the art on their palettes was just as good as their models yeah like, unintentionally that is so freaking cool yeah. oh that's that bright. That sprite is like that sprite is like teeny tiny too. It's got to be so little because his initials are probably super small in that. Well, and like, and that's it's on top of a piece of double stick foam on top of a bottle a cap. Lid. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow, that is so fun! What a great idea! Oh, I'm so stealing that idea with the leftover. Dave, paint. did you did you get the big shot? Uh, of I of think I think this is. I think this one is from uh, last week, so oh, I'm okay. going to turn it last week. But too uh, soon, yeah. Scott. Too soon there. Yeah. yeah. Scott's you asking, uh, "Are you positive that the background wasn't AI generated and then printed?" Too soon, <laughs> Scott. That's how we get Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I wasn't involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> you picked a, a good year to quit Golden Demon judging, Caleb. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, thought that that was, I thought that was such a that was such a weird thing for the for Golden Demon, because the the argument was what it was it was the the background. Uh, let's just let's we don't need to discuss them here. We'll it's move so on. Weird. It's so weird. <laughs> That's a whole nother episode. That's for other people to talk about. Uh, oh, but this is this is Steven's background again. Yeah, that yeah, is so cool. It's the same thing. It's so cool. And let's say uh, a cool uh, fantasy football ogre uh, on there as well. What a great idea. What a great idea. Really I love cool. it, Stephen. So inspired right now. And on, on this one, I love that uh, on the, the silvers that uh, he's painted in that little reflection of the green mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as well, so which would uh, be on the, the turf of the, uh, the pitch. I really like his yellow. Like he, he did yellow like the right way in my, for my money. Like he, you know, he, <laughs> There's like two or three layers of yellow, and then he edged it with white, and then used a little bit of almost like a brown or like an ochre wash to to show the shades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like flat hazard yellow like you would see on something. Yeah. Right. But yeah, excellent work there, Stephen. Yeah, and really cool. that is, I think that is it. Let me just. Yep, that's it. Uh, we did cool. it. We did it. We we ran through the tape. We made oh, I love doing I could sit here and do this for the next two hours. I love this. It's so fun. I, I'm not going to say we haven't done that before, but uh, <laughs> oh, we've all almost all ended up in uh, different spots. Yeah. So, Kat, Kat you cool. didn't notice that, that our one hour show is a two hour show? Two hour show. <laughs> the extended cut. 
Yeah. You go a little overtime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little, just a little. But uh, no, fantastic. Uh, great show. Uh, thank you, everybody who submitted uh, miniatures from uh, to the Build Paint Play community. Uh, absolutely awesome to uh, to see them all. Um, again, as, as I said, there was going to be a, a pretty sort of wide variety of minis. Um, so it was definitely cool to see those. Uh, excellent. Uh, also, just want to say uh, thank you very much to Caleb and Kat for coming on the show to talk about what they're doing now with uh, the Army Painter, what we can uh, hope to see in the, uh, the coming months as the uh, the programs start to sort of coalesce, develop, sort of get in there and finalize. Um, is Army Painter also going to be running or sort of coordinating the uh, the Hobby Hall at Nova? Oh, yeah. I'm running. Um, the Hobby Haven is my area entirely again. And we will actually, I'm going to host the MHCP in there again, which is a mental health charities for um, vets. And you can come and do a speed paint. Um, kind of a paint and take speed paint kind of thing, but it's a competition where you can bring your friends, all of you can sit at a table or not, come and do it by yourself. Um, but it's done in rounds and you can win some prizes and come support that charity, which last year, um, I think Paris, we, we raised in the thousands. I can't right. remember what the landing number was because we've talked about a bunch of numbers, but it was in the thousands just at Nova alone that we were able to do that. So we'll have the entire Hobby Haven area next year again, or this year again. And then at Nova, we will have a big booth in the game hall. Um, GW is on one side of the entry door in the game hall, the main game hall, and we're on the other side of it. So we're both in end capping the main hall right there. So okay. awesome. yeah, you'll be able to come find us in both spots, which will be super fun. Excellent. Excellent. Did, did, uh, you read what, did you read what Matt wrote? He did. Uh, I did. Oh. I did. I did read. Oh, I did read nice. what Matt wrote. Yes. <laughs> My language Thanks. processor Thanks, is Matt. terrible tonight. Um, That's yeah. a feels. Uh, Matt wrote, uh, thank you, Kat and Caleb. Uh, we love that Army Painter continues to support creators like Dave and Jake. Uh, they and folks like them deserve it. So I felt my I felt my grinchy heart grow three sizes. It happens every week. <laughs> <laughs> Got you in the feels. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Lee joined us late. Don't. Uh, but yes, you'll definitely be able to uh, catch up with us uh, on the YouTubes very shortly. Uh, and cheers, uh, cheers, folks. Another great show. So thank you very much, everybody who uh, joined us tonight. Uh, I think we are ready. I'm kind of lined up. So, Jake, I think we are ready for the oh, we're, we're good to go? All right. So, um. Again, thank you so much again to Kat and Caleb for being here. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, huge thanks to the Army Painter for allowing uh, us to do the show and for sponsoring us and for allowing these two fine folks to be here with us. Um, thank you, everybody, who who sent photos in. Thanks for being here and uh, checking out the stream. Um, if you guys have any questions, please post them uh, below. You can also post them on our Facebook page. There should be links below to yep. a lot of the stuff we were talking about, as we usually mm -hmm. put in most of our show notes. Um, we will see you guys next week. And as always, do not forget to build, build paint, paint, play. play. Yeah. Shut up and sit down.